My main concern at the time was the uh, so I'm going to turn the truck off, lock the doors, and bring my key. Secure my truck. Mac in the building. What's going on? Hey, brother, man. Thank you for having me on the show. Hey, you're welcome. You had a very, very, very touching TikTok. I, I believe a lot of people is not really understanding how your health is really important out here. A lot of people is just getting into this industry just thinking one-sided. They thinking that it won't happen to me. When it happens to you, it's like, man, I wish I would have known about it before. And here you are telling the story of how something so small made a whole life changing for you. And I'm I'm glad you're here to to tell that story. So Talk about talk about what happened to you, man. Where were you when all this went down? Um, okay, this was last week, and um, I was coming in off a load going to Jacksonville early in the morning at um, oh man, some distribution. Oh, BJ's Wholesale Distribution Center in Jacksonville. Now, mind you, as I was driving, I've been feeling for the last few days prior to this. This happened last Friday, so around Tuesday, I wasn't feeling too good. All right, I was just a tightness in my chest and whatever. I thought, you know, all right, whatever, just come because I'm 58 years old. All right, you figure I'm not waiting for anything to go. Anything to go wrong scares me right now. I jump out the bed wrong and ow, and I'm thinking, yo, this is the big one. But in any any event, but I, it was a discomfort I was feeling. So my dispatcher, she reached out to me on Thursday because I guess she heard it. Enough. Okay, I said I'm not feeling too good. She's like, okay, I'll go to the hospital. I said, yeah, yeah, I will right now. So as soon as I drop this load off in Jacksonville. Okay, here comes Friday. I get the BJ's in Jacksonville again, and I'm there at nine o'clock in a.m. Brother, so if I when I tell you, I sat there till two in the afternoon waiting to get on. My dispatcher was calling me every fifteen minutes. Are they done yet? Can you go in and do this? And I said I can't go in because it's a distribution center. Okay, most people know how that works. She's talking. They have you disconnect, go park somewhere else, and we'll call you when we're done. Okay, so and that that was annoying me. And she was already asked, telling me go to the hospital after this load. But around two p.m., as soon as I got empty, she already had a load booked for me, picking up in um, Savannah, 144 miles away. Okay, I this is Friday. I'm already in Florida, mind you, I live in Miami. And I'm thinking I asked her to send me home for the weekend for some reason. She said no, but I got this good load going to Ohio, paying 800, you know, 800, 800 miles. So, you know, I had to weigh my options, and I was like, whatever. I drove to Savannah, got there about 5 p.m., and I might have had like two and a half hours left of clock time left in my LB. Around 8 p.m., come around, I ran out of hours. I'm looking at the light in the mirror. It's still green. I'm stressing. I'm going through all type of stuff because it's a rough day. I'm not feeling good. Okay, and now I'm angry. I'm calling my uh, after hours dispatch. I'm cursing him out too, man, getting off this load and so on and so on. He pretended to make a call, so no one's answering. I knew that. So 11.30-ish in the evening, uh, I get out the truck. They finally called me because I spazzed out on them about 10.45. I said, you're not loading me in the next 20 minutes. I'm pulling away from the dock. They started loading me expeditiously and whatnot. And I don't know. I got in the office. They made me wait maybe 10 more minutes of my paperwork, and I'm pacing back and forth with discomfort. Now, while I'm in the office, I was by one of the vending machines. I went to go get water or something, and it hit me right there. But I shook it off, and I'm like, nah, nah, I'm going to get out of here. I'm just mad, and let me get to a parking space on personal conveyance or something like that. And let me get my papers, and I had to walk like down maybe six steps. And no sooner I made it to the bottom of the steps, it was like, I wouldn't know what an elephant feels like if it sits on your chest, but that's what it had to feel like. It was just a constriction, a pressure, a pain. I turned left, I turned right. It was excruciating, like my kidneys on. But it was just like my body just locked up and I couldn't breathe. And it just so happened that another driver who was walking in, I guess, because paperwork, because he seen me sit down on the steps. He says, like, yo, you all right? I can't even talk to the guy. I can't get two words out. I'm like, what's going on here? All I heard him running in the door, call 911, and so on. It's raining outside. My guy. I, I, listen, to the driver who helped me out, I appreciate you. I never got his name. But he would be on the call of duty. He called himself. It's raining, like I said. I'm in my hoodie. I'm in my jeans. And he's got me sitting on the floor in the concrete outside in the rain. Tell him, roll over on your side. I finally got three words out. I'm not having a speech, but I'm already soaking wet. So anyway, five minutes later, fire rescue pulled up and so on and so on. They put me on the EKG machine. It was all over the place. They thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was having a heart attack, to be honest with you. And we go to the hospital and rush to the emergency room and so on and so on. 
But uh, my main concern at the time was uh, for someone to turn the truck off, lock the doors, and bring my keys, secure my truck. People at the warehouse said they were going to do that. They never did. Okay, we'll get back to that part soon. And um, I shoot to the hospital. Like I said, they all type of machines, CAT scans, and uh, ultrasounds, and whatever gizmos they can, whatever they're going to bill me with, and so on. And about an hour later, uh, they gave me some morphine because I was in excruciating pain. And the morphine kicked in and so on. About an hour later, after the doctor came back and said, you're having a, you, ha- you were having a pulmonary embolus. And I'm like, okay. And he said, it's a blood clot that could have went right to my lungs and killed me. And, and yeah, he caught it. Luckily, you know. And they wanted to keep me for a few days. I was like, yo, I'm loaded. I was ready to get out the door. And I, I have to wonder alone. You know, here it is, me putting work before my health. You know what I'm saying? I checked out of that hospital about 10 hours later. I checked myself out because I was too worried about this load. And I guess it, once I hit that truck in the morning, Saturday morning, when I made that video, it hit me. It really hit me because I did that before I pulled out. And, it, you know, I had to weigh the pros and cons about this industry. That's when I, the realization came in, man, you can die out here at any moment, you know? And that's been my biggest fear for seven years. I've been here for seven years now, and I'm like, yo, I'm living in a rolling prison. I mean, the money was great two years ago during the pandemic, three years ago. We were rock stars. We were superheroes. Right? The country needed us. I made so much money during the pandemic. I bought a house, <laughs> a few cars, and, you know, we upgraded big time. We moved all on up like the Jeffersons. And here it is almost three years later, man, and, you know, as much as I hate to admit it, I had to, I had to get rid of my truck. I have, I have my own trucking company. I had to, I'm running under that, you know, because these uh, companies now make you have an LLC anyway, regardless whether you're a 1099 employee. That's a new scam in Chicago. And so on and so on. I, got, I had to get rid of the truck, and I went back to a company driver. And... I lost that power that I'm used to having, controlling when a dis- you know, my, my dispatcher calls me. And if I don't like the load, I don't have to take it. But here I was, I had to do what I had to do. You understand? Because the economy is taking a turn for the worse. Now that I sit here and weigh the pros and cons, I'm like, yo, I am I here too long. Too long. I'm, I got more days behind me than I got ahead of me. And I'm like, I don't want to wake up in a truck stop after three days and I'm, uh, I'm not answering phone calls and my wife is blowing it up until she figures it out. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm dead somewhere. Or go off an awful mountain or something like that in the middle of the winter in the nighttime. So right now I'm going to figure it out. But this industry, yeah, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Right? This is not for everyone. I did it because I, you know, this was my midlife crisis. I did this at 50. I'm about to be 58. Okay, I've seen the country. I've seen all 48 states. I've slept in every major city. I've hung out in every major city. I've done it over and over and over. But, you know, this is not what it used to be anymore. You know, this is a job I took pride. I love driving. Don't get me wrong. I love it. You know, I just finished cleaning out my truck, you know, my daughters and whatever. And, you know, I'm looking at the truck like, wow, is this really it? You know, but I'm keeping, uh, you know, my health is more important than anything, man, at the end of the day. All right, because these companies don't care about none of us. All right, we are just a number. We are just a, you know, if they can put robots in them trucks, they will. Believe me, the minute, the minute these companies can go uh, driverless trucks, they're going to. They're going to. We have too much of an inconvenience to complain too much, and you know, the load is too heavy, and, and, you know, that's just how they're going to run you. They're all worried about the next load, you know. Mac, uh, yeah. Mac, Mac, well, I, I am I am definitely glad. Shout out to that driver. I'm, I'm yeah, glad so that that driver... I'm glad that driver was able to see that it was something wrong. He ran in. And he's speaking with my dad. He's speaking. Yeah, he, so he, ran, he ran in, got 911, got the got the medical attention that you needed because that it, it could have been the end for you right there. And you're exactly and right, sir. I, I had tears in my eyes laying on that ground. I'm like, I don't want to die right now. Everything was like, yeah, it was life changing. I'm like, nah, not today, not here, not like this. Not like that. Well, let's unpack all of this, man. You're at the distribution center. I, I I agree with you because some of these distribution centers just disrespect us all to holy hell, man. If it's only like a little, maybe like 10 pallets, it takes like forever to either load us or unload us, man. And you, it's not, and, the, it's not even the distribution center. It's the lumpers. It's the lumpers. What the worst? Who's the biggest culprit, though? The biggest culprits is the is the grocery stores. Those those are the biggest culprits, man. I I hate grocery distributions. They give us an appointment. They have to take it off your truck, break it down, and put more pallets. And why don't y'all just take it off the truck and let me go about my business? Right. They don't care about your time. They don't care about your time. So you so you get to the first delivery so the first one is the delivery where you were stuck there for how long all morning five hours 
Yeah, I got my appointment was at nine. I got there at eight forty-five, better early, and it took a moment until nine thirty to sign me to a door. Okay, I get in the door. Okay, whatever. Lucky for me, I got a TV. I got a PlayStation in my truck. So you know, after the first hour or something like that, when I'm like, all right, the truck's not rocking, and I'm like, here we go, and I'm doing my thing. But like I said, I wasn't feeling good that day. I wasn't feeling good. It was like I woke up with a tightness in my chest. It was hard to breathe. And I'm like, it almost felt like COVID. I've had COVID twice. you know. And I was like, no, nah, not again, because I've heard there's a surge of this all over again. But, you know, I took the jab. I did what I had to do. But I'm like, OK, but it, it was different, different this time. It's just a pressure getting heavier and more intense. Man, five hours. I Believe me, I, I, I know I know those feelings, bro. I know it. I, I I feel it every day when I get these lumper these these lumper deals, man. You get in the door, you're supposed to be there on time, and if you're not there on time, it's even worse oh, because you have to be at work in. You're working. <laughs> they tell me they give you half an hour. What if a car flipped on the highway on your way here in the morning? You know? Oh, we only give you a half an hour. Now you can't predict traffic. You can't predict weather. You know, but that's why uh, I always try to be early with that assumption that I'm going to get in and out. And, you know, here it is. I had plans. Okay, whatever. I had to get unloaded by, I, I'm here at nine. I get unloaded by 10, 11 ish. I'm cool with 11, two hours. I give them two hours to play with because, you know, you're supposed to give them two hours. You know, around the four hour mark, you're starting to look crazy. I, I was, I, I ran out of cigarette. <laughs> There's no machine. Yeah, I'm losing it now. Yeah. And that's what, that's what, you know, and my dispatch is calling me like, are you empty yet? Because I have to slow it. I have to slow it. I'm like, I'm not. And she was just putting more pressure on, you know. And I didn't want to curse her as a woman, you know. And she was filling in for my regular dispatcher. But, you know, the, company, the people I'm rolling with, they just don't care, man. They don't care. And that's what was another thing that made me sit back and like, man, nothing good comes out of Chicago. Okay? You know? It's crazy to, to hear this story, man. So you're... So you're now empty. Instead of going over to the hospital to get yourself checked out, your company decided to go ahead and get you another load, which forces you to wait even longer for the load even to be loaded. Longer, even longer. I had no idea that was going to take that long. Mind you, when I, I had like maybe five hours probably left on my clock when I left the distribution center, and I had to go to Savannah, which was 144 miles away. And uh, I left there. Hey, I got there about 5 p.m., and there was no trucks there. Or nothing. It was just like the fact, oh, you had a 3 p.m. appointment, and I, I lied over there. I was like, well, you know what? The driver who was assigned this load caught a flat, and I just picked it up at the last minute. Whatever. They just sat me down for six hours, my brother. Wow. Six and a half hours. That's where the place, everything turned yeah. for you. Everything went down. Everything went down. There was a tile place called Anatoly in uh, Port Wentworth. The tile place. I had to build my pallet. All right. So before we get into the the hospital stay, do, do you have insurance? No. No. These companies don't do that anymore. When I first started driving, you had all type of health insurance, medical, dental, vision, all that. 401k. Now the new thing is that you make a company drive a 1099 too and charge them a $2,500 escrow. Where do they do that at, bro? Where? What's the purpose of me being a company, company driver making 70 cents a mile and I got to pay you $2,500 escrow and, you know, I don't understand that and you 1099 me at the end of the year. I'm a contractor then, correct? Yeah, I, I never understood that either and that's why that's why every time i make these phone calls to these companies and get some information and they be like well yeah you're a 1099 company driver but we're going to offer you 50 60 70 cent a mile like bro no the going rate for 1099 is more than that bro yeah <laughs> so that's yeah. crazy yeah I can get I, I, I can get talk. I can get sixty cent a mile as as a company driver with a mega carrier. Correct, with benefits. All right, so let's let's talk about it, man. You unfortunately you you don't have no insurance. You you go to the you go to the hospital. The hospital okay. got to do they they got to do their thing to make sure that you're all right. They of can't course. turn you away. But unfortunately, you're you're going to get hit with that bill. You say they did. They did everything. I intervened. It's like they claimed I was dehydrated, and you know the IV bags cost an arm and a leg. But just a, just a, um, the ambulance ride is about six hundred dollars on any given Sunday, and it was about a five minute ride. Right, just for them to stabilize you costs this money. Everything is money. This bill here. I mean, when it comes to cardiac issues, sort of related or something pulmonary, yeah, you know, I'm going to be looking at a. Fifteen twenty thousand dollar bill, easy, easy. Wow. That's enough to put you. That's enough to give you a cardiac attack or a heart attack. 
And just imagine, and just imagine if you was admitted, like if you have to stay a couple of days, you even have to pay for that. They wanted me. I was admitted. I was admitted. And I told the doctor I have to go because I was under a load. That was insanity talking at that moment. I, I was like, I got to get out of here. I was. They, they stabilized me. He said, listen, if your pressure comes down, because my pressure was like 158 over 108, it was high. All right. They gave me some, uh, you know, a blood thinner. Uh, ampelodine, amp, uh, something, and low beam, and low beam, which is uh for your blood pressure. And he said, you know, you get it down under one forty, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, you'll be able to, you more or less stabilize. You can drive. He said, if you can't bring your pressure down, I cannot let you leave by law. He said, I can call the old Department of Transportation. You know, because he said I can't. He can call to uh, the person by law. It has to be on anything over one forty. They can report that I'm unsafe to drive. So my pressure got down about one thirty something at about eight in the morning after being there all night. And I slept it off. You know, was, you know, the tension. I guess the stress was good. The morphine had me <laughs> cool, and I was ready to go in the morning. But I have to go. He said, listen, we recommend we're going to hold you for a few more hours on a few more tests because this can happen again. And I said, I have to go. He gave me the speech. When you get home, see your cardiologist. He gave me like seven days worth of uh, blood pressure medication and so on. And tomorrow, uh, because I just got home today, I will be seeing a doctor in the morning to see if I'm fit to drive because I have to renew my medical card by Monday. Wow. So before this ordeal, do you have blood uh, high blood pressure? No, I didn't know. I didn't know. No. Not nothing. I, you don't feel it. You don't feel it. You know, your blood pressure is a silent killer. All right. You, I mean, you might start feeling discomfort and little things, but you think it's with age. You know, like I said, I started this at 50, and then I was weighing 200 pounds. Today, I'm 58, weigh 230, and it's weight that I can't get off anymore. You know, ankles are swollen up because I'm sitting all day long, and your legs are at an angle. There's no circulation getting out of your ankles. And it's like I'm you're waddling through the parking lot when you jump out of a truck. Everything aches, and I'm like, this is not good. This is not good. You know, food and stuff stops suck. This lifestyle will kill you. You know, you're, we're on the road all day long looking at uh, hoping somebody doesn't jump in our lane because, you know, 80% of tractor trailer accidents began because a four-wheeler cut us off. And our first instinct is not to hit them, right? If they're real too hard, and what happens? You're all over the place. Yeah. There's just a lot of hazards out there that we have to deal with all day, and then you worry about that. Okay, I didn't make enough miles this week, and that's an issue I've been having with these people where I'm at, where I was at because today was my last day. I was just talking about how, how things is out here. I, I was just... I just did a video on a company on a company that was offering guarantee pay and in order to get that guarantee pay you got to jump through hoops They're giving us another reason for us to be more stressful out here now we got to worry about doing this that and the third just to make fourteen hundred dollars if that if that if that and that was my issue that was my issue with those people i, I mean like i said a few years ago i was breaking home you know, i was an owner operator with fourteen thousand dollars you know line hauls at the week and when and after expenses, I'm bringing home five, six thousand every week. But they are eking out an existence for thirteen hundred dollars because these people can only get me two thousand miles a week. And I mean, I was, I've been begging for miles. I love to run, and all they eke out every week is like you know two thousand miles. That does thirteen hundred dollars. It doesn't help. Fourteen hundred dollars and seventy cents a mile doesn't hurt. You know, help me not anymore. My overhead expenses at home is too much. After you go to your doctor, I'm going to assume that you're now going to give, going to be diagnosed be diagnosed as high blood pressure. High blood pressure is one of the factors of keeping your DOT certificate and you got to keep it up under a certain number but your blood pressure is is a thing now you mentioned in the video that you don't even know that you're going to get yourself recertified have you put some more thoughts in that as far as your blood pressure and getting and getting yourself recertified to come back out here and drive I, I didn't want to stop driving, but I'm, as far as come back out there, no. I think it's time for me to go local, man. I, it's time. You know, I have a, you know, I, I live in Miami. I, and every time I don't live at home, I visit here. I'm on the road for three, 28 days a month. I come home. I'm here. I come home on a Friday. Monday, I'm gone. Once a month. I don't live here. I visit my home. And I'm tired of that. 
You know, when I started this driving thing, my youngest child, my daughter, was 11. She's about to turn 18. I missed all that. I missed all that. I'm dealing with a young lady now. She's not my little, you know, monkey like I used to call her back in the day. And I realized she's become a young woman. I have to graduate high school this year, which is crazy. And I'm like, yo, you missed all this. My granddaughter's 12 years old. Like, I missed all that. And at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, these are, these are things that you can't get back. I mean, I enjoyed the open road. Don't get me wrong. And shout out to everyone who's done it for 30 plus years, 40 years. Yo, shout, you got millions of miles under your belt. Shout out to you guys. But uh, when it starts me, I, I'm trying to be here a little longer. You know what I'm saying? And in, in good health. I'm not trying to be all bent over and can't walk and super overweight with, you know, angle out calves inside the tree trunks and I've seen it all out here. People drive let themselves go. And you sit back and wonder how do you get his medical card? You know? So if they can do it, so can I. So Mac man, you you mentioned early, early in the years before the pandemic and during the pandemic you said you made made bank and you you was able to do a few things get a new house get some cars but after the pandemic everything just pretty much went to shit what was you was doing before the pandemic was you was still driving before then before you decided to get your own truck and everything uh yeah i got my i started my I started driving in 2017 with the Roadmasters in Orlando. And I graduated top of the class. And I mind you, this is my midlife crisis at 50. <laughs> and, and I ran circles around them youngsters in the class, but I graduated. I was out of it in 16 days. Um, I went to a company. I was a company driver because my experience, you know, your first year. And 16 months. And after 16 months, uh, I opened up my own company. I started Stewart Trucking Solutions. And I started putting, I, you know, I made a little money, whatever, and I bought a truck. I bought a 2015 Volvo for $37,000. And it turned out to be the worst deal of my life. I mean, that truck broke down. I spent about twice as much as that in repairs. Every other week, there was something wrong with this truck. But I didn't care at the time because I, you know, I was making great money. The economy was good. You know, every driver out here was eating. That's when they were talking about it was a driver shortage. It wasn't because we, we were able to get what we want for the freight. Then the pandemic came around and whoop, the only ones on the road, I'm getting almost, I'm, I'm running aluminum cans from Jacksonville, Florida to Arizona, all right, for $11,000 a pop, 7,000 7, pounds a week, coast to coast. That was my run. That was my run. Back to forth, back to the can out of Jacksonville. Come on. It was sweet. Toilet paper. Rolls of paper. Toilet paper. I made a killing off of that. And then, uh, yeah, apparently everything got back to normal. And much as I don't bibble and dabble in politics, but uh, this guy here screwed it all up. <laughs> so unfortunately, you had to give the truck up and become a, a company driver again. It sounds as though you you worked for a black ops company out of out of Chicago. Was that the first, this company that you're driving for now, was that the company that you went back to after after you gave up your no. truck and everything? No, 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 these are new, this is a new company out of Illinois, and uh, yeah, you know, like I said, nothing good comes out of Chicago. Yeah, I don't want to call out specific uh, people or whatever, races or whatever, but we're going to call them Europeans, okay? Uh, they, they don't, they don't, they don't move right, man. They don't move right. And I've had been with several, everything, just about every company I've ran with or believe on to or whatever or you know i ran my truck under all right they all came out in uh chicago and they're crooked man they're crooked they don't care about you they don't care about us they don't care about us they look at us second class citizens man. you know it's like just run 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 and you know when you tell me you got no hours you say wait hold on certify this and when you look boom 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 five more hours have popped up on your clock and I'm just like what and you're explaining these guys are tired they don't care they don't care well matt man i'm glad that you was able to reflect on everything and put everything in perspective what will be the what will be the takeaway now for everything that just happened to you and what will be what will be the moral of the story here the moral of the story okay everyone has a different moral of the story but my moral of the story is probably going to be you know been there and done that that's my moral of the story right now i figured you know what i'd rather be able to get up in the morning like average Joe Blow and go to work and come be back to my home by 6 p.m. to a hot cooked dinner, you know, and so on and so on, because this is, 
this is what I, you know, before trucking, I was a family guy, you know, been married 30, 30 something years. I got four kids. I've raised them all. And, you know, all of a sudden I just took off, you know, and, you know, I have to be here now. I got missed out on a lot of years. You know, I had to find myself, I guess, from my bucket list. All right, I scratched that out because I'm a second generation trucker. You know, I grew up with my father. My father was a driver. I've been in a truck since I was six years old, watching my father shift gears. And I wanted to emulate him, but I got to do with this for me now. And at the end of the day, you know what? My father died broken, penniless too. Right, this, this trucking thing killed me. I'm not trying to repeat that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. My condolences oh, to God. you for your father, man. No, no. It's all good. It's all good. I broke penniless. My father bust his ass and give us all, you know, give us an upbringing, you know. I'm done at it. I love the time. Another era when, you know, we had to be in by the time the streetlights were out. We still went out to play with kids. And we didn't have all these electronic gadgets. We had the best child. You, know? you didn't know your parents were struggling. And, um, you know, that wasn't our place to know that thing. But you know, you had clothes on your back and a hot meal every night, right? Back. You know, kids stood in place. Kids stood in their place. The parents didn't talk about kids. And they ear hustling. Hey, what are you doing? You know, kick rock. That's how I was raised. I'm growing up at a Mac. The, the state of trucking today with all these new young drivers coming in and they're glamorizing the, the trucking industry, they making trying to make trucking look easy and it's not. What would be did, what would be something? What would be what would be your what would be your statement to the them? younger generation? Yeah, what would be stuff? your statement to them? Okay, okay, this is a lifestyle. Like I said, this is something you got to love and get up and respect at the same time. Okay, now if you're worried about your baby mama or your girl, and this this is you're too young for that. This is the time right now. All right, put in your little five, six, ten years, whatever you want to do, get your money up. By the time you're around thirty, thirty-five, you're good. You can settle down and do what you want to do and find something else to do. Do this while you're young. That's the moral of the story. While you're young, you still got a little health and, you know, and, you know, you can still get about and get your money up. That's it. But this is not a forever thing. I can't see. But like I said, shout out to the drivers that have been doing this all their lives. And you're gonna use, you are the, the pioneers. You know, I did it. I came. I saw. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm comfortable right now being a yard jockey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I am comfortable being a yard jockey. I'm comfortable with double trailers right now for FedEx or UPS. Cause I have all my endorsements. So, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a day of me reflecting and looking because I've already been looking since I decided to come home. So I got a few feelers out there. But my goal right now is local. But for the younger generation, hey, see the country. See the country. Hang out. Do y'all, man. Do y'all. What what would be when you're, what what would be your what would be your statement to these young drivers as far as taking care of your health and making sure that you have health insurance and stuff like that in just in case of situations like yours that happen to them? Listen to these kids out here, man. I mean, most companies, like you said, a lot of these youngsters starting today, they're all company drivers. Okay, they you know your first year, nobody's gonna put you in a lease truck your first year. Okay, they want that first year experience. And if you like I said, you go to like Prime or something. All these companies got benefits. If it's health insurance, take advantage of that, okay? If you lose it, go ahead and reapply, you know, keep it going. Me, I'm an old, stubborn bull, and I'm figuring I'm never going to the hospital. You know, that's that mentality. I, you know, like I said, I'm from another time. <laughs> and But uh, now I'm realizing it's the wrong, it's the wrong mentality because, you know what, when I was laying on that ground soaking wet, I was like, I don't want to die, you know? So maybe I, this is something, too, I have to look into immediately, immediately. I, you know, health insurance is priority. Keep you guys, you know, eat healthy out here. Don't eat all that junk food. All the, most truck stops have McDonald's, Hardee's, and Arby's. All that is garbage. All that is garbage. I try to eat a salad a day or something like that. But it's best to go to Walmart, buy your own food, when you're refrigerated, you know, a microwave or an air fryer, and do your own thing. You'll eat healthy and you get more bang for your buck. And get out of the truck and walk. Walk. Don't be on your phone after driving all day long and checking your email, your Instagram, your TikTok like me. <laughs> That's some problem right there. And walk for 30 minutes. You'll thank me later. Thank you later. Thank you now, man. Thank you, driver. Thank you for coming on and sharing your story. Much success to you out there. Great health to you out going forward, man. I I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with us today, man. I appreciate you having me, brother, too. And you reached out to me. That moved me. Like, you know what? I Because to be honest, I didn't think that many drivers were going to feel the way I felt 
on my TikTok, you know, it did a lot of views and a lot of comments. And I was shocked. I ever a lot of people feel the same way I do. They were all, I was reading the comments. Like, they're all saying, I'm ready to get out of this too. So, you know, it's time for reform. It's time for change. Right? It's time for us to be respected because we're, you know, we're the ones to keep this country moving. And, you know, people drive past us and forward, give us the finger because we're moving too slow. And I'm like, next time you go to the store, I hope you don't, they don't have what you're looking for, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, we're underlooked these days. All right, we're, we're seen as a burden now of the industry. We're just big trucks in the way. You know, this is how uh, entitled the, the people is, have become right now. They think it magically appears, and it doesn't. There are sacrifices that have to be made. Weeks at a time on the road with your family and so on. Missing away from your family. Missing away from important things. Missing away from everything you love. You know, and for what? For a few dollars that these companies don't even want to give you? And the first chance they find to take a few dollars from you, they will. So, like I said, though, but I, I appreciate you having me, brother. You know, I had a lot to get off my chest, and you allowed that.